They have meaning and purpose, and this is critical. And we already said it can involve high-level thinking and social analysis. As students work deeply and think deeply to figure out what's the issue here, what's going on. So for example, you can walk in and say, we're going to do a food drive, and everybody goes, oh yeah, 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 we do it over here. And does it have a lot of meaning to them? No. And very often it's set up as a competition anyway, which is all external. So they're not even caring about the topic. Or they can go deeper and find out what the issue is of hunger in their community. They can own it and they can respond to it. And then you're going to see something come to life. The social analysis part is critical. Oh, good. Oh, everybody's here. Parking was tricky, right? Is that it? Parking into my address. Oh, wrong address. Me too. Good. Got it. Glad you're here. We're just starting. You'll be fine. All right. Youth initiative, voice and choice. Obviously, I wrote that bigger this time because we really want youth initiative to be a key element of what we're discussing today. Where are opportunities for young people to show they have a voice and a choice so that it's their experience? Now, the problem I often have had is I'll go into a room and I'll see, oh, this is what's, what they did for service learning. It can look so neat and perfect, but they did it. You know, who did most of the work then? Parents and teachers. When students do authentic work, sometimes it's a little messy around the edges, but boy, you know they really did it. And what we want is service learning that's a little messy around the edges. So it's a student's experience rather than us trying to shape it and frame it. You want to do service learning, do it yourself. Let the kids really experience and express their voice and their choice, and that's what will look so lively and will be so fabulous. As we hear, we hear from Lulu what's going on with her work. It has aspects of social and emotional integration so that young people are feeling who they are. It's the affect and the cognitive coming together. It's inquiry-based. Young people are generating questions, more questions, more questions. You know, somebody once said to me, why do I think service only matters is because I said, when done well, it provokes more questions. You never end asking questions. You say, well, what about this? And what about this? So we create an inquisitive, curious populace who set out to change the world. You know, I just flew back from, um, I just flew to and from Amsterdam uh, last week uh, to do some work with the International Baccalaureate Organization, because they're looking at service learning more deeply as well. And on the way, I saw a documentary about Jacques Cousteau, his 100th birthday. If you can watch this video, it's absolutely sensational. It's awe-inspiring. And he was a man who was not a scientist, he was a curious person, and it's curiosity that drove him to be this extraordinary um, advocate and steward of our planet. So curiosity and inquisitiveness is something we need to develop in students. As you mentioned, it's intrinsic over extrinsic. We want to always emphasize the intrinsic over the extrinsic. Which is more dominant in our schools today, extrinsic rewards or intrinsic? Do we like that? No. So we need to change it. And it's actually much easier than you think to change this. First, we just have to stop the extrinsic. That's really pretty basic. And increase the intrinsic. But you'll see how that works today. It also can expose young people to careers. As they see people in new positions and new places, and they open themselves up to ideas they've never even heard about before. It should and could and always is able to pr provide a global perspective, even if you're working locally, you can say, how might this connect to a global issue? So young people become international-minded about the world around them, and we start breaking down these borders and boundaries between people and places. And it has reflection. It always has elements of reflection, which we will look at more deeply. And it also always has literature. There's fiction and nonfiction, picture books, novels, articles that you can always integrate so that we start reinfusing the love of reading into our young people again. Now, one of the things I always do is I always bring a set of books here that are some of my favorites. So today, you'll be able to find and bring home some great books. I don't take credit cards. Um, I also don't make much money on this. It's actually more work than it's actually ever worth, but I do it as a contribution to the community. You can either pay cash, checks, or give Kathy Hakim, who runs it, your information, and we can bill you later. The main thing is to get these books in your hands. One of the books I was asked to bring extra copies of is my book, The Complete Guide to Service Learning. So by many, because there's a lot over there. So this is what's used internationally to promote service learning. And it also has a CD-ROM in the back with 234 additional pages. So it's a 500-page compendium about service learning. So now everybody's 
table is a little a little folded piece of paper that says wait to open. Can everybody find that piece of paper on your table? It tells you two aspects of service learning that I mentioned before that I'd like you to watch for in the upcoming examples. So take a moment and share what's on the paper with your table. Just let everyone know what's on the paper. Does anyone have one? It's not on the one. Okay, we'll give you academic elements and All right, so everybody has two elements, am I right? These are two of the qualities to service learning I referenced before. As I go through some examples of service learning, I want you to be a lookout for those two especially. You can look out for other things also, but keep your eye out for those two. Sometimes I think it's better to know what you're looking for than to kind of get a vague feeling. So I wanted to try this this time. So look, look for these two aspects to see if they're present in service learning. All right, so you ready for stories? Everybody ready for stories? Yes? Oh, come on, a little more. Everybody ready for stories? Yeah, of course we are. We love stories. All right, this one comes from Texas. I was born in Texas, so I just have to tell a Texas story. These, uh, this is a physics class. I like to start off with a high-level class because sometimes in high-level academics in high school they say there's no time for service learning. Have you heard that before? No time. However, let's look at an example that shows that time can be very well spent. This is a physics class. Now, I confess I did not take physics in high school. Who did? Who took physics? Okay, so you know more physics than I do for sure. What I do understand is in a physics class, Students always study the speed of cars and how they stop. Am I right? Velocity. Yes, and braking. Right. Okay, so I'm on track. I like to get that kind of reinforced. All right, so we always talk about cars and brakes and speed and stopping, but these students were studying that as well, except one student said, what if you're texting and driving? Is that an important issue? Yes. Is it a life and death issue? Yes. yes. They started investigating this in the physics class and found out that you are 20% more likely to have a serious accident if a person is texting and driving. They became alarmed. They started doing surveys and asking questions. They even saw a clip on CNN. That a CNN study, they went to a high school and they interviewed students of driving age and said, how many of you text and drive and found out that 60% that confessed that they text and drive? They asked a girl in the, in the class, what do you think of that statistic? She said the other 40% are lying. <laughs> kids text and drive. Well, these kids got alarmed by that. So they decided that they would um, actually teach other students. So there they are teaching students who are going to be getting their driver's license that year about the hazards of texting and driving. And they're connecting it to social studies and civics. Because if you can see what's on the paper up there on the, on the overhead, it talks about how do you turn the idea of um, an idea into a law. Because some states, as you know, have banned texting and driving in Texas hands, so they want to get a movement going in Texas to get other people involved in making that a law. So the students are learning about other subjects, they're presenting, they're sharing ideas, and they even have an apple which shows it is in fact physics. <laughs> and that was what they did for service learning. And I think it's okay service learning, but I think they missed an extraordinary opportunity to take it further. I would like you at your table to take one minute to think, what, where else could they have taken this message about texting? Where could they have extended it? I want at your table to come up with, in one minute with an idea of what else they could have done with what they know about driving and texting. You've got one minute at your table to come up with an idea. Go. All right. I'm going to ask for your attention again. And I've already started eavesdropping and writing down some of what I hear. Kind of like what I like to do. So we're going to collect some of these ideas. And if you hear something that somebody else says that you didn't, you might want to jot it down. So let's start just because it's easier for me. And expect typos. Expect many typos. Um, just start sharing. What is it not? Anybody? What?
What else is it not? This many. An add-on. Anybody else? Made him do five. <laughs> we had a good laugh. Time. Time. Anything else? Stag. We've got about oh, stag. All right. you don't agree with because then you have what? Time for conversation. Good thinking. Alright, so let's think about these. Okay, who's got one they say, well I'm not sure about this. Who's got an who wants to who wants to speak out now? Who's got one they want to disagree with? Or question, yes. What do you mean by that, Jenny? Okay, so she was saying it's not an add-on. Um, sometimes it might be an add-on. Somebody go back to 